stuck in life, you should aspire for more. Connect with others who desire to aspire for more. Reach for your goals when you do, you allow yourself to aspire for more. Dr. Tammy is here to help you aspire for more. Aspire for more. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of Journey Toward More, a podcast where we discuss topics to help you manifest more, more of what is for you, more of what you desire, more of what is aligned with who you are, and more of what honors you on your journey toward more. I am your host, Dr. Tammy Francis, better known as Dr. Tammy, the catalyst, strategist, educator, consultant, author, and speaker. I am here to help you on your journey toward more while also sharing mine. I have a holistic approach to learning and development, and I truly believe that everything starts with purpose, vision, and passion. And so those are the things that we focus on here is the mindset work before we get into all the other topics I talk about, like how you can leverage the opportunities of the digital economy, emerging technologies, how we can strategize to help you upskill, reskill, or retool, and provide you with access to resources to assist in your transition and growth. Here we do touch on some strategy because I usually give homework. (laughs) That's the educator in me. But honestly, this is to prepare you for the future. So my other title that I've added in probably um, the last six years, uh, of course, it's been in the making for longer than that, but I finally owned it about then. And that's futurist and helping you to prepare for what's next and move in the direction of more. So that's what we do here. We talk about strategy. We talk about action. We talk about purpose. We talk about how we get our mind right and reflect on our life. And today's episode is no different. Today's episode is play your position. Before we get into it, let me just say, Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for being here. And be sure you check out my link tree. Link tree slash Dr. Tammy Francis. Make sure you check out for the latest and greatest that I have going on. If you need to book an appointment, that's the way to do it. If you want to find out more or you need a speaker for your event, that's how you can submit your request. So I invite you to check that out. So the question for today is... Are you playing your position? Let's say questions, because here's the other one that we'll talk about today. Are the people in your inner circle playing their position? I'll give you a moment. Take a deep breath and think about it. So the first question is, what is your position, right? Um, Before you could answer those and to know whether you're playing your position or not, You must know what is your position. I'm going to give several examples today. Um, Three I'm going to talk about because this particular podcast is directed toward leaders, um, toward those who are desiring more for those entrepreneurs and those who are maybe even an educator in whatever space um, and whatever industry you're in. And so... We are leaders in what we do. And so that's what this is targeted toward. But I want you to know there are other positions that I'll talk about than what I will talk about today. But are you playing your position, whatever that is? And looking at your your inner circle, those people in your circle of influence, 
Are they playing their position? You know, sometimes we have to evaluate these things in order to make the changes needed to help us in our transition and growth. So I think about, as I was, you know, thinking about this topic and it came to me really strongly, I was thinking about my oldest son. You know, he plays several positions. Um, He can actually play several sports, but I think football is his favorite. And I say think because, you know, um, (laughs) things change quite often when you're young. But I think football is his favorite. And I've seen him play wide receiver. I've seen him play safety. I've seen him play running back. I've even seen him play defensive back. And I think the one that he settled on and really like, and I think that he's really, really good at is running back. Even though before I saw him as running back, I could have, you you would have asked me that and I would have said receiver. And I don't know much about football, except what I've learned from being a parent and being that parent that cheers and figures it out so that she could be the best cheerleader as po- as possible when when my child is on the field. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those parents. But I I do know when I look at the players, no matter which sport, and I, I like sports analogies, I apologize. That's probably the topic I know least about, but I like those best when explaining things because there's so much talent on the field. And in this podcast, we talk about your purpose and your talent or your gift. And what I know is that there are several on the field. What I know about my son is that even though I know like he is an amazing athlete and he can do all these things. What I've learned about those who participate in those type of activities and those competitive things, and it could be gymnastics, it could be um, martial arts. I've done that. I've, you know, I've, I've learned, I've trained in martial arts, so I know a little bit about that. But what I know is that these three things exist when you're looking at players or athletes that you can see clearly. And that's why I'm using this example. Disclaimer, doesn't mean it doesn't happen in other spaces, but it definitely happens when it comes to sports and athletics. And that's you have nature versus nurture versus instinct. And I think those who have a combination of all three and can do and could tap into all three very well typically do better in whatever they decide to do. So as I'm thinking about play your position and I think about players, I think about those three things. Nature, that natural talent. I think about nurture, those learned skills, those things that can be developed. And let me just say I think about this when I teach literacy, when I teach reading as a reading professor. I te- I think about that when I'm teaching my students. Like there are some skills that you have and there are some that you learn and can learn and or develop, right? And then there's instinct and that's the intuition. And that is something that I think, you know, um, All three of those is about the mind. It's about mindset plays a lot in which one you tap into when, right? So the nature, we typically tap into that automatically and and instinctively we, we do that without really, um, and I hate to use that word because then it confuse with when I talk about intuition, but it's it just happens it's just something that you do because you can do it right it's that natural talent and so um and those players i can typically spot immediately like they don't even know the sport but if you put a ball in their hand magic happens 
And that's how I think about that. And then there are some things nurture that you can learn, those skills that you can learn. Like, for instance, when my son played running back, and he wasn't familiar with the position because he had always played safety or receiver, defensive back. He had played one of those other three positions. He had never played in all his life. He had never played running back, which is surprising because he's so fast. But he's never played that position. And what I realized at the beginning of the season, he didn't know enough about it, how it worked and all those things. And he, you know, he's never, you know, it's, it's something when you watch it and you're in it. Um, but it's interesting that initially he didn't really, he kind of knew, but he didn't really know and been in that position. But as he learned the position, he learned the plays, he learned those things he found his sweet spot with it. And then it became one of his favorite positions when initially he resented it. He didn't want it. He was like, no, no, no. Because I think the learning curve when we're dealing with things that we have to learn, that learning curve keeps us from stepping into our greatness and keeps us from accessing that power we have within. Which is so interesting. But then I realized also with some of the positions he played, it required a little intuition, right? It required to read the play, to read what was going on. We always, I always say, because I'm a teacher, read the room, right? But read, reading the play and reading what's going on on the field to know what to do, to know where to move, to know, you know, what area to move in, especially in safety, right? To what area to move, whether you look at a player or you look at a certain area or whatever. Um, Then I realized that part of being a good player is knowing, having the intuition for that position to know when is the time to go, where to go, how to go, And how to navigate that. So as I think about, are you playing your position? Are you tapping into those three things? Nature versus nurture versus intuition, right? Are you tapping into those gut feelings to that knowing um, and being very metacognitive? Um, You know, I think about what I do and there are leaders, fans, and followers, (laughs) You know, leaders, in order to be a leader, and this podcast is about leaders. So if your position is a leader and you are tapping into those three things, a leader requires you to be decisive, trustworthy, clear, have clear communication, resilient, the ability to empower others. A leader is visionary. So there's that little intuition, like, where do we go? What's the next move for me? What's the next step, right? The leader sets direction. The leader helps others and themselves to do the right thing to move forward. So this idea of this forward motion, which I think, you know, um, or in this case, in my metaphor, moving the ball, (laughs) Um, you know, that thing, inspiring others in confidence, right? And a leader, if you are a leader, are you doing those things? Are you playing your position? Or are you moving into the realm of a fan? Are you watching others and supporting others and focus on others as to po- as opposed to your position? A fan, you know, fans are usually long-term, long-lasting. I'm in Texas, and so Dallas Cowboys, many people here, a lot of people here in Texas um, have been fans for a long time. Um, 90s, like I can even go back with many of the people I know who are fans, and they have been fans since the 90s, late 80s and 1990s, right? And... um, Fans follow with purpose. 
Like they are really intentional about what they do and who they follow and how they support, right? Um, They want to support those they admire, or in this case, the team. They're committed. They trust whoever is the leader in that leader position. Fans also want a connection and a community. So usually they're a group and you've, you've seen fan clubs and all these things, especially when it comes to celebrities, you've seen that. Um, and it's, they're, they're fans. Or are you a follower, which is short term, right? Followers usually come and go. They follow, they pay attention, and then they move on to something else. And then they come back when you come across the feed. They're not consistent in their commitment, right? They're fair weather or fickle in their support. Followers draw attention to themselves rather than others, right? It's about what's in it for me. What can I get from this person or this thing or team or celebrity or whatever, right? They're more interested in the the moment rather than the impact. So I think you have to decide which are you. Like, are you a leader? Are you a fan? That requires some commitment and devotion, community, and all of the support? Or are you a follower? Are the people in your circle playing their position, right? Which do you profess? If you are a leader and a business owner or entrepreneur, are you playing your position? Whatever it is. Now, disclaimer, you can play multiple positions. You can, I, I, you know, I gave that example of my son playing and being good at multiple positions because I wanted you to know, like, I'm not saying you have to only play one position. Um, that's not for me to say. This is for you to evaluate. But I am saying, do you know which position you play when? You know, just like in football. If he's playing safety, he's on defense. That's a different mindset. That's a different approach. But if he's playing running back, that's on the offense. And then that's a different mindset. That's a different mode of action and mental energy and all of that. And movement and how your movement. Pushing and stopping versus going, trying to hit the end zone, right? It's a little different depending on your position. And so you just got to know which position you are playing when and know what those characteristics are. So let's get into what I want you to do and encourage you to do is to really think about which position are you when. Fan, follower, are you a leader? What position do you play and when do you play it? I'm going to give an example about multiple positions. I'm a teacher. That's what I've done for more than 24 years. That's one of my positions. But I'm also a parent. But I know when I go to my kid's school, when I walk in there, I have the knowledge of a teacher. I don't leave what I know, my schema, all of that as it relates to teaching and education when I go in there. But when I go in there, I'm parent. I'm acting in the role as parent, not teacher. Whereas when I'm at work and I'm doing my job, now I'm teacher and not parent. And so I know which position I play when, and I go intentionally to play that position and to do that well. So the first thing I want you to do is figure out your positions. What are your positions and when do you play those? And Then reflect on each one. Am I playing my position? Note the characteristics you possess. 
for that position? And do you tap into nature, nurture, that schema I was talking about, or that intuition? Do you tap into all three for certain positions or are you only tapping into one and there's room for growth? See, this podcast is about transition and growth. And so in order to grow, you got to know where the areas where you need growth. And if you're not tapping into those three areas for a position, that's definitely an area of growth because there's probably things you can learn. There's probably things you can be more aware of and really um, know, find patterns and trends. The third thing I want you to do. So first you're going to figure out your positions. Then you're going to look at each one and see if you're using nature, nurture, and intuition, that instinct. And third one, you're going to evaluate your circle. Look at your inner circle, your circle of friends, your circle of influences, employees, depending on which position and those around you, who are those people in your circle of influences? Maybe you are a supervisor and there's other supervisors and y'all make decisions together for those that are under you. What does that look like? Are you playing your position? Even with your family, your friends, your parents, your siblings, what are their positions and are they playing them? Are they playing their position? Are they really in their position? One, if it's employees, those are areas of growth and areas where you can decide on training. If it's people in your circle, that may determine who you need close to you. Because if someone's not playing their position or the position that you have put them in, So let's put that out there. You may put people in a position that they're not ready for or capable of delivering. And so you have to be honest with yourself where people are because not everyone will support you on this journey. Not everyone is with you. And so you'll have to know, are they really going to support me and be a leader in this? Are they going to be a fan? Are they going to be a follower? Because if they're followers, you got to determine how much energy you put in sharing what you're doing. Like all of that comes into play. When it comes to the people in your life, if you feel agitated, if you feel frustrated, if you feel any little bit of irritation that comes from being around them or when you are around them, that may be an indication they are not playing their position. And that could be the position they think they should be playing in your life or the position you put them in. So you have to be really careful about that and really clear about how do you see them because that helps us manage expectations as well, right? So I encourage you to just stop and be sure, one, you are playing your position. Now, The definition of your position. So be clear about what that position is when you give it a name, when you name it. Maybe you need to set boundaries, but I do encourage you to live it, to practice it, and train for it, to learn more. Just like we do in sports. We live it, we're watching it, we're doing plays, we got playbooks, we're doing all this. Practice it, put it in a play and tweak and refine and then train for it, right? Which learn, professional development, whatever, take a course, whatever it requires. Because you can play multiple positions, but you must be clear on those positions and when you're playing them. You got to know which and when and stay in that position. Stay, what we like to say, stay in your lane, but play your position. And it is my hope what you're hearing me say is that you are a leader. If you are taking that on as a leader to play that position, walk into it. Make sure that you do those things of a leader. Be decisive. Be clear in your communication. Have a vision and set an example 
that will inspire others and build confidence in those that are that you are leading. Build and coach your team. Do that. Whatever that means to you and whatever you're doing. So today, I'm going to encourage you to play your position. And if you play multiple positions, know which you're playing, when, and what that looks like. Thank you so much for hearing me um, with this um, loose analogy of sports and all of you listeners who are sports fanatics yes you are a fan <laughs> you support you like the community you are committed if you are a fan and that is your thing and I have misspoken about anything I've said about the aspects of sports hear my heart <laughs> Not this brain of mine that is still trying to understand it. So accept my apology for any, um, you know, things that I may have said that was not quite it. But I want you to know to play your position. Step up, step in it, and let's go. If this is your first time joining me, make sure that you like this podcast, that you download it. And that you listen to other episodes. There are previous episodes. Check them out. You may find one or two or 43 (laughs) that resonate with you. And um, if they do, please leave me a kind review and rate this podcast. If that option is available to you on the platform you're listening to this. I hope you'll join me in Morocco May 2024, May 13th through the 19th of 2024, we're going to Morocco. And I hope you'll join me for our annual international retreat. And if you are interested, like I said at the beginning, visit my podcast, I mean, my link tree. And that's where you can access this podcast. You can access the information for the retreat. You can access all of that at my link tree slash Dr. Tammy Francis. And it's in the show notes below. So just scroll to the bottom of this under wherever you, at the bottom of this podcast where the show notes are, and you should be able to see this in this description. If you're interested in being a part of any of the causes I support or the projects I'm collaborating on, I invite you to check those out on my link tree. There's an anthology coming. I have some speaking engagements coming Um, this month and of course beyond, but I have some that are coming up quite immediately. No matter when you listen to this, this is probably true. So check out um, my link tree and check out the calendar. If you're following me on social media, Dr. Tammy Francis, make sure you follow me everywhere. I'm even on LinkedIn as Dr. Tammy Francis or Tammy Francis. You can put me in the search and find me. Um, Twitter. Sorry, I keep saying that X. Um, TikTok. All of them, I'm Dr. Tammy Francis. So check me out, follow Facebook, Dr. Tammy Francis. I look forward to seeing you uh, follow me so that way you can, maybe will I can convert you to a fan. And on this journey toward more, we can both be leaders. And that is my hope that when we're when you're done um, and you follow me for a while, you'll be we'll both be playing all these positions for each other and for others. So have a great rest of your week, the rest of your day, and remember to move in the direction of more and prepare for what's next with Dr. Tammy. Have a great day, and we'll chat soon. Take care. Who
desire to aspire for more. Reach for your goals when you do, you allow yourself to aspire for more. Dr. Tammy is here to help you aspire for more. When you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Believe in yourself, you'll get more. You should aspire for more. Aspire for more. Uh -huh. You should aspire for more.